Types of shock. The main types of shock include hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, obstructive shock, and distributive shock. Main types of distributive shock include septic shock, anaphylactic shock, and neurogenic shock. Hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock is due to reduced intravascular volume, that is, reduced preload, which, in turn, reduces cardiac output. Hypovolemic shock can be divided into two categories, hemorrhagic and non-hemorrhagic. Hemorrhagic shock. Reduced intravascular volume from blood loss can result in shock. There are multiple causes of hemorrhagic shock, of which blunt or penetrating trauma, includes multiple fractures without vessel injury, is the most common, followed by upper, for example, foraceal hemorrhage, peptic ulcer, or lower gastrointestinal bleeding, for example, diverticular, arteriovenous malformation. Non-hemorrhagic shock. Reduced intravascular volume from fluid loss other than blood can cause shock. Volume depletion from loss of sodium and water can occur from a number of anatomic sites. Examples of non-hemorrhagic shock include gastrointestinal losses, for example, diarrhea, vomiting, external drainage, skin losses, for example, heat stroke, burns, severe dermatologic conditions including Stevens-Johnson syndrome, renal losses, for example, excessive drug-induced or osmotic diuresis, salt-wasting nephropathies, hypoaldosteronism, Third space losses into the extravascular space or body cavities. For example, postoperative and trauma, intestinal obstruction, pancreatitis, cirrhosis, crush injury. Cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock is due to intracardiac causes of cardiac pump failure that result in reduced cardiac output. Causes of cardiac pump failure leading to cardiogenic shock can be categorized into three main categories cardiomyopathies, arrhythmogenic, and mechanical. Cardiomyopathic. Some of the cardiomyopathic causes of cardiogenic shock include myocardial infarction, involving more than 40% of the left ventricle or with extensive ischemia, severe right ventricle infarction, acute exacerbation of severe heart failure from dilated cardiomyopathy, stun myocardium from prolonged ischemia, for example, cardiac arrest, hypotension, cardiopulmonary bypass, myocarditis, advanced septic shock, myocardial contusion, drug-induced, for example, beta blockers, arrhythmogenic. Both atrial and ventricular tachyarrhythmias and bradyarrhythmias may induce hypotension, often contributing to states of shock. However, when cardiac output is severely compromised by significant rhythm disturbances, for example, sustained ventricular tachycardia, complete heart block, patients can present with cardiogenic shock. Tachyarrhythmia is characterized by excessively fast heart rates and can include various types of abnormal heart rhythms, such as atrial tachycardias, like fibrillation, flutter, and reentrant tachycardia, ventricular tachycardia, and fibrillation. On the other hand, Bradyarrhythmias involve abnormally slow heart rates and can include conditions like complete heart block and Mobitz type 2 second-degree heart block. Mechanical Mechanical causes of cardiogenic shock include severe aortic or mitral valve insufficiency, acute valvular rupture, papillary or corda tendon rupture, valvular abscess, critical valvular stenosis, acute or severe ventricular septal wall defect, Rupture ventricular wall aneurysm, atrial myxoma. Obstructive shock. Obstructive shock is mostly due to extracardiac causes of cardiac pump failure and is often associated with poor right ventricular output. The causes of obstructive shock can be divided into the following two categories, pulmonary, vascular, and mechanical. Pulmonary vascular. Most causes of obstructive shock are due to right ventricular failure from hemodynamically significant pulmonary embolism or severe pulmonary hypertension. Patients with severe stenosis or with acute obstruction of the pulmonary or tricuspid valve may also fall into this category. 
mechanical. Patients in this category present clinically as hypovolemic shock because their primary physiologic disturbance is decreased preload rather than pump failure. For example, reduced venous return to the right atrium or inadequate right ventricle filling. Mechanical causes of obstructive shock include the following. Tension pneumothorax, pericardial tamponade, constrictive pericarditis, restrictive cardiomyopathy. Distributive shock. Distributive shock is characterized by severe peripheral vasodilatation, vasodilatory shock. Molecules that mediate vasodilatation vary among the etiologies that will be discussed now. Septic shock. Septic shock, or sepsis, defined as a dysregulated host response to infection resulting in life-threatening organ dysfunction, is the most common cause of distributive shock. In the United States, gram-positive bacteria, for example, pneumococcus, enterococcus, are the most common pathogens responsible for severe sepsis and septic shock. Pathogens responsible are as follows. Gram-positive organisms, for example, pneumococcus, staphylococcus, streptococcus, enterococcus, listeria. Gram-negative organisms, like Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Escherichia, Haemophilus, Legionella, Neisseria, Morixella, Rickettsia, Francisella, fungal, Candida aspergillus, viral infections such as influenza, cytomegalovirus, Ebola, varicella, parasitic infections, for example, Plasmodium, Ascaris, and Babesia, Mycobacterium species like Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Mycobacterium abscessus, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. The Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, or SIRS, is a widespread inflammatory response that may or may not be associated with infection. The presence of two or more of the following criteria, one of which must be abnormal temperature or leukocyte count, defines Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. 1. Core temperature, measured by rectal, bladder, oral, or central probe, of more than 38.5 degrees Celsius or less than 36 degrees Celsius. 2. Tachycardia, defined as a mean heart rate more than two standard deviations above normal for age or for children younger than one year of age. Bradycardia is defined as a mean heart rate less than the 10th percentile for age. 3. Mean respiratory rate more than two standard deviations above normal for age or mechanical ventilation for an acute pulmonary process. 4. Leukocyte counts elevated or depressed for age or more than 10% immature neutrophils. Examples. Burns, trauma, pancreatitis, postmyocardial infarction, postcoronary bypass, postcardiac arrest, viscous perforation, amniotic fluid embolism, fat embolism, idiopathic systemic capillary leak syndrome. Multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Multiple organ dysfunction syndrome refers to progressive organ dysfunction in an acutely ill patient, such that homeostasis cannot be maintained without intervention. It's at the severe end of the severity illness spectrum of both infectious, sepsis, septic shock, and non-infectious conditions, for example, systemic inflammatory response syndrome from pancreatitis. Multiple organ dysfunction syndrome can be classified as primary or secondary. Primary multiple organ dysfunction syndrome is the result of a well-defined insult in which organ dysfunction occurs early and can be directly attributable to the insult itself, e.g. renal failure due to rhabdomyolysis. Secondary multiple organ dysfunction syndrome is organ failure that is not in direct response in the insult itself, but is a consequence of the host response. For example, acute respiratory distress syndrome in patients with pancreatitis. Neurogenic shock. Hypotension and, in some cases, overt shock are common in patients with severe traumatic brain injury and spinal cord injury. Interruption of autonomic pathways causing decreased vascular resistance and altered vagal tone is thought to be responsible for distributive shock in patients with spinal cord injury. However, hypovolemia from blood loss and myocardial depression 
may also contribute to shock in this population. Anaphylactic shock. Shock from anaphylaxis is most commonly encountered in patients with severe immunoglobulin E-mediated allergic reactions to insect stings, food, and drugs. The term anaphylaxis also applies to acute systemic reactions caused by a direct release of mediators from mast cells and basophils produced by various triggers, for example, exercise, contrast media, natural rubber latex, idiopathic. Drug and toxin-induced shock. Drug or toxin reactions that can be associated with shock or systemic inflammatory response syndrome, like syndromes include those associated with drug overdoses, for example, long-acting narcotics, snake bites, insect bites including scorpion envenomation and various spider bites, transfusion reactions, heavy metal poisoning including arsenic, iron, and thallium, and infections associated with toxic shock syndrome, for example, streptococcus and escherichia. Endocrine shock. Addisonian crisis, adrenal failure due to mineral or corticoid deficiency, and myxedema can be associated with hypotension and states of shock. In states of mineral or corticoid deficiency, vasodilatation can occur due to altered vascular tone and aldosterone deficiency mediated hypovolemia. Although thyroid hormone plays a role in blood pressure homeostasis, the exact mechanism of vasodilation in patients with myxedema is unclear. Concurrent myocardial depression, or pericardial effusions, likely contribute to hypotension and shock in this population. Patients with thyrotoxicosis can develop high-output cardiac failure and do not develop shock per se. However, with progression, these patients can develop left ventricular systolic dysfunction and or tachyarrhythmia, leading to hypotension. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.